Ladies and gentlemen, you are tuned into another episode of the Paul Leslie Hour. And now your host, Paul Leslie. Hey, it's me. Yeah, hi. How are things? I'm good, Paul. How you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. Thanks for doing this. Oh, it's an honor to talk to you. Well, thank you so much, sir. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the presence of the mighty Sco. <laughs> John Schofield is one of the most influential guitarists around, a performer, composer, and recording artist, very prolific both in his collaborations and as a band leader. And at this juncture, he's released a trio record on ECM. It's called Swallow Tales, and it features nine compositions by jazz bassist Steve Swallow. And I'm honored to be with you. How are things? Are you making the most of, of this crazy world we're in right now? Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's a crazy time, and I'm okay. My family's good. Uh, I'm hanging in there, you know, getting to practice a lot and uh, enjoying the nice weather. But I feel bad for uh, the people that are sick and the people that don't have enough money to get through this. But, uh, yeah, I'm fine. Amen. Well, can you tell us about how you came to first know this legendary bassist, Steve Swallow? I met Steve, you know, when I was 20 or 21, I think. And uh, I had gone to the Berkeley School of Music right after high school. And um, after a year, Gary Burton came to teach there. The great vibraphonist. I was a fan of Gary's and, and had his records, and and uh, was like, "Wow, I can't believe Gary Burton is coming to Berkeley to teach us." And uh, Steve Swallow was the bassist on his records that I had. And uh, after Gary, when Gary came, I was a ro- roomed with two guys. One guy named Ted Siebes on drums, and Chip Jackson a bass player. We were roommates. Now, I couldn't play much, man. I was just getting it together. And uh, these guys were better than me. Uh, Ted was good. So Gary met Ted and he wanted to play with him more because Ted could already play. So Gary, after he would be done teaching, he wanted to avoid rush hour. So he would come over to our student apartment where we had a set of vibes and stuff and jam with us. And we played countless times with Gary, this rhythm section. And I got to know Gary. And, and what we played was the Gary Burton songbook. A lot of those songs were written by Steve. And then the next year, Gary brought Steve to school to teach and got him a job at Berkeley. And I met Steve and we jammed a little bit and he thought, well, I guess this guy uh, is interested in my music and and jazz and uh, has some potential. And he became a real mentor to me and a role model. And we've been friends ever since. Uh, We've played together tons and trios and other formations and my trio and and i've been made a bunch of records with steve and he's been one of my best friends for for uh that whole time and uh this one we decided to i decided to just do steve's tunes most of the records we've made together have been primarily my music but uh, steve is one of the great composers in jazz and i've been playing his music actually learned those songs on the guitar back in the 70s, you know, and always loved them. So for someone who has never met Steve Swallow, how would you describe him? What is the guy like? Well, he's a, you know, he's been a, a role model for me and a bunch of other young musicians well, who are no longer young. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's a really generous person and f- Great player and fun to play with and really supportive of the other musicians he plays with. He's a bass player, you know. He gets in there and and, uh, makes the music feel good for you. And uh, he's really smart, really funny, and uh, really into the music. When you decided to release this album, what was his reaction? How How did he react when you told him about Swallow Tales? He said... um, yeah, if we go out on the road, we still got to play your music, too. That's all he said. <laughs> I think he thought I was, uh, you know, he didn't ever, 
you know, and then after the record came out, he said, I really appreciate you doing this, you know, but Steve never voted to do this or pushed it in any way. It was my idea because I love the tunes. He's, he's pretty humble. You were talking about Gary Burton earlier, and one of the songs on this album, Swallow Tales, that you've released is Portsmouth Figurations, which for the hardcore Gary Burton fans, they might they might know his version of it. But you did some really interesting things with that track. Tell us about that one. Yeah, that's from Gary Burton's album Duster from 1967, which I got when I was in high school and was part of my introduction to jazz, one of the first things. Swallow played bass on that, and he wrote that tune. We uh, kind of freed it up on there, you know. Uh, we played the tune and then played kind of free, but in time, but very free. And Steve's great at playing free jazz. And I used my little backwards pedal. That's Some people have noticed that. Just in a couple of little places, I, I put this pedal on and it, it makes m your lines go backwards. <laughs> it, it, it's a recording device that records the notes you've just played and then plays them back at you and you can set it to play them back at you backwards. And if you're playing eighth notes where it's going along, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba, then it just comes back at you, but the, the, the envelope is reversed. So it's, uh, it's a cool effect. But, you know, we're playing time, no changes uh, and swinging on there. As mentioned, you, you did this album as a trio and... You're joined by Steve Swallow on bass and then Bill Stewart dr on the drum kit. Tell us about Bill. You have quite a, a number of collaborations with him and a lot of time together. Yeah, we played together. I met him in 89 when he was right out of college. And uh, Joe Lovano, my friend, the tenor player, who I've known since college, told me about him. And uh, Bill is a real jazz musician. His dad was a good trombone player. And uh, Bill swings super hard because he, he knows the music and the tradition and can do it, as well as playing the drums great and, and all that. He's an um, all-around musician. He plays piano, and, and he understands everything that's going on in the band. He's got, uh, I would say, a photographic memory uh, for music. Uh, he, he remembers everything he's ever heard i think every song i've ever brought in he'll remember it 20 years later when i've forgotten it and he's so quick that, that's the kind of lightning fast reflexes that really are important in an improvising group uh he's dedicated to improvisation and and to making the group sound good uh he's one of the best musicians i've ever played with if you had a best case scenario somebody out there some guy or girl is listening to this album swallow tales what do you want the listener to get from the experience of hearing it you know i i just hope people like it i'm i honestly don't think about what i want the i mean this sounds selfish i guess but i think that <laughs> what we have to do is make music that we really like and if I like it, then I'll be excited about it, and, and I will consider it good, you know. And that's all we can do is then hope that people share your taste, <laughs> you know. And certainly some people won't, but uh, if you have a direction and a conception yourself, you have to follow that. And then hopefully people will, will like it. That's what I hope. I hope that they are, I hope that they're, I don't know the word, uh, you know, captured by the music like I am with music that I really like. And uh, that's what I hope for. Not necessarily your favorite track, but if you had to choose one of these tunes to represent the album, which one would that be? Well, it's, that's a hard one, you know, because I like all the tunes. I guess, uh, I don't know, Eider Down. That was the first song Steve ever wrote. <laughs> he wrote it in 1965. He was on the road with a really great band, Art Farmer's Band. And Pete LaRocca was the drummer. And Pete and Steve were really good friends. And 
Pete said, listen, you talk about all these songs and the construction of music. Why don't you write a song? So Steve took him up on it and wrote Eider Down back in 1965. And, um, it's a great song to play on, you know, to blow on. A lot of people have recorded it. Gary Burton, Stan Getz, uh, Steve Kuhn. And the first recording was by Pete LaRocca, the great drummer. And um, Joe Henderson was on that record. I think we did a good version of it. And at the end, we kind of vamp out. We get off of the uh, and play on, on this closing vamp. And uh, I thought we got down, so to speak, on that. I'm hoping you can touch a little bit on this upcoming film that's going to be out, Inside Schofield. What do you think about that? Well, I don't know yet, because he's not done. <laughs> now, a German filmmaker named Jörg Steineck contacted me about this and asked me if I'd like allow him to make a movie about me. I thought, wow, what? Okay, sure. And he wanted to come on tour with us and film us. And he did. He came around in Europe and he came on a whole West Coast run with my band, with uh, a little different thing with Bill on drums, Bill Stewart, but also Gerald Clayton on piano and Vicente Archer on bass. The thing that we were doing in 2000, whatever it was, 17, so he, he has a bunch of footage. He's interviewed me. He's interviewed a lot of other people, Swallow and Bill and Phil Lesh and John Cleary and, a, you know, people that I've played with in all kinds of different settings. And he's going to put together this film, and he's not finished yet. He's still trying to uh, get funding. So if anybody wants to put in money, they can go to the Inside Schofield Facebook page or something. But, you know, he's trying to do it. I don't have anything to do with it in that I'm letting him do it. You know, I, I don't want to make a movie about me. I just want him to make a movie about me. <laughs> well, I would like to give him a little plug. Anybody out there, they can go to scofilm.com, S-C-O-Film.com. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, he'll appreciate that. What is the best thing about being John Schofield? Well, well, the best thing is that I'm alive and breathing and experiencing life right now. That's pretty good. The other best thing is that uh, I get to make records and play music with these great musicians. And uh, I get to play guitar. And I've worked on it my whole life, and I still love it. And it's a challenge, and uh, every day is a different day, so I... I, I I'm used to just practicing and trying to get better. I'm not sure if I'm succeeding, but you never know. And, uh, you know, there's certainly not a worse thing uh, about being John Schofield because I feel really lucky that I've gotten to do what I've done. And I've got a great family, a great wife, Susan, and my daughter, Jeannie, and our grandkids, Willa and Felix. And, uh, yeah, that's the best thing about being me is having this family. I always like at the end of the interview to give the guest the stage. And we've had this huge, huge uptick, or I don't know what you call it, upswing maybe in listeners over the past couple of months, right. because I think everybody's at home. <laughs> yeah. Well, isn't that great? <laughs> and, and, you guys are playing jazz music, and uh, that's a huge area nowadays. You know, there's all kinds of things that are called jazz, and, and they're very different. But it all is under the same umbrella, which is a good thing. There is no one way to play jazz. You know, it's, it's bigger than that. And improvising music is it's humanity. It's what we do. You learn to play your instrument, and then you start to mess around. And uh, I remember, <laughs> I remember there was this young kid who played saxophone, and uh, uh, the son of a friend of mine, and he was like twelve or something. And uh, and and you know, I I thought, well, I'll play him a Dexter Gordon record. And, you know, playing some of the real stuff on saxophone and you see what he thinks. And I played it for him and the kid said, well, you know what? That's not real. 
uh, they, he's just messing around. <laughs> and I, I was thinking, oh, my God. And then he played me what he liked, which was the hook to this this song, this pop tune that everybody's heard. I can't remember the name of it, but it had a saxophone. Da, 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 da. Uh, anyway, and it was, you know, like four notes or something, but that's what this kid was into. And when he heard Dexter Gordon, he thought Dexter was just messing around. And that's exactly right. But <laughs> kid, you try and do that, you know. <laughs> but improvising is is like speech and, and like what I'm doing right now, which, you know, when it's not good, it's just somebody babbling nonsensical stuff that doesn't make much sense. But it allows, you know, what's going on inside your head to come out and and some spontaneous stuff is often the deepest stuff. And that that's the jazz message that I really believe in, you know. And uh, I think there's a lot there for the listener at your radio station uh, when you guys are playing jazz music. And uh, now that we're home, give it a shot. <laughs> well spoken. Anyone out there, they can visit johnscofield.com. Again, the album, the new one, it's called Swallow Tales. Please check it out. You know, I had all these labels I put on you at the beginning, that you're this guitarist, you're a composer. People say, <laughs> you know, the legendary John Schofield. My last question, just a quick question. How would you define John Schofield? Well, I wouldn't, because I think when you <laughs> define something, you limit it. And I'd like to be able to change. But, you know, what I am is just another kid who got a guitar in the mid-60s when the Beatles took over America and rock and roll was what most of us kids wanted to do to play in a little band. But I took it a little further and I discovered jazz music and rock and roll and rhythm and blues and all are the children of jazz music jazz is you know where it came from and um, i'm s lucky because i'm really interested in music and uh, jazz and, and jazz related musics have taken up all my time you know checking it out and trying to learn how to play and uh that's what i'm about you know is learning the music and i'm still interested in it and uh studying it that's it. Well, what a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much for making the time. No, my pleasure, man. And keep playing the music, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Everybody stay safe down there. <laughs> All right. Until next time. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Paul Leslie Hour. Hosted, written, and produced by Paul Leslie. Intro theme song, Alexander's Ragtime Band, written by Irving Berlin, performed by Dan Barrett. Outro scanning G things improvised, performed, and produced by John Goodwin. Until next time. Goodbye.